The movie Seven Days in Entebbe was released in 2013 and tells the story of an event that happened in Uganda in 1976. I found the movie to be quite interesting and it intrigued me enough to want to look up the true story and see how that compared with what they showed in the movie. So needless to say, what follows here today will contain spoilers for the movie. On the 27th of June 1976, an Air France flight departed from Tel Aviv in Israel and headed to its destination of Paris with 246 passengers on board, along with a crew of 12. The flight had a stopover in Athens, Greece, where it picked up an additional 58 passengers, including four hijackers. Just after departing for Paris at 12.30pm, the flight was hijacked by two Palestinians and two Germans. They diverted the flight to Benghazi in Libya, where the plane stayed on the ground for around seven hours for refuelling. Once they were done there, the hijackers took the plane full of hostages to Entebbe Airport in Uganda, where they met up with four accomplices and the support of Idi Amin, the president of Uganda. It was here that the hijackers announced their demands. They wanted $5 million and the release of 53 Palestinian and pro-Palestinian militants. On the 3rd of July though, an Israeli rescue force stormed the airport, killed all of the hijackers, and rescued the hostages. The movie hits all of these main beats, and includes some smaller details, like the lady who faked a miscarriage in order to get off the plane in Benghazi. The movie focuses quite heavily on the two German hijackers, whose names were Wilfred Bose and Bridget Kuhlmann, who in the movie are played by Daniel Brühl and Rosamund Pike. And it's in the parts that feature them that the movie embellishes things a little. This is because not a lot is known about Bose and Kuhlmann's actions during the standoff period of the timeline. But what the movie does accurately portray is what happened to the two of them once the raid started. One of the hostages, Ilan Hartov, reported that Bose was the only hijacker who entered the hall housing the hostages when the raid started. Hartov said that at first Bose pointed his gun at the hostages, but, quote, immediately came to his senses and ordered them to find shelter in the bathroom areas. According to Hartov, when the terminal was breached, Bose only fired at Israeli soldiers and never at the hostages. Bose and Kuhlman were both killed along with all of the other hijackers. Going back to the start of the rescue raid, the movie shows that the Israeli unit commander, Yonatan Netanyahu, the brother of future Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is shown as being killed soon after the squad reached the terminal. In the real story though, it happened well after this. When the hostages were being rescued and loaded onto planes to leave the airport, they came under fire from the Ugandan military forces that were at the airport. Five Israeli soldiers were wounded, and it was here that Netanyahu was killed. The movie also seems to show that there was only a handful of Ugandan soldiers there at the airport, but in reality, between 33 and 45 Ugandan soldiers were killed. So I guess we can say that there were probably a lot more Ugandan soldiers there. In fact, the Ugandan side of things is not really given that much coverage in the movie, apart from the overbearing presence of Idi Amin. In fact, there were two major things that happened that weren't covered in any detail in the movie. The first was what happened to some of the Ugandan soldiers. After the rescue mission, Idi Amin was furious that the Israelis had gotten away with it. And the Ugandan military commander, a man named Isaac Mali Yamungu, arrested 14 of the soldiers who survived the raid and accused them of collaborating with the Israelis. He then proceeded to shoot dead 12 of them based on this unsubstantiated claim. 
The second was with regards to one of the hostages, a 74-year-old lady named Dora Block. She had choked on some food during the hostage situation and had been allowed to go to hospital. And she was still in hospital when the hostages were rescued. And as a result, she was actually left behind in Uganda while the other hostages went home. While in hospital, she was visited by Peter Chandley, the second secretary of the British High Commission in Kampala, and she informed him that while she had been treated well, she didn't really like the hospital food. Chandley and his wife left the hospital to go and get her some food, and when they returned, the military refused to let them back into the hospital. The reason for this was that while they were out, Block had been dragged from her bed and murdered, along with the policeman that was guarding her and several of the doctors and nurses who had tried to protect her. Her body wasn't found until 1979. So, all up, the movie does a good job of telling the main parts of the story and shares enough of the story to pique your interest. But there is so much more to the story than what they show in the movie. The true story has multiple levels of international political chicanery, human drama, tragedy, and tactical military action.